totally sure this is going to work. I'm going to modify one of these. It's possible we'll hit a, we'll have to stop and reset. That's okay. graphs are going to look like and what it is that we're even trying to do. Like? Your water bottle. Your bottle. I want you to shade in what the region is you think that LED is going to be fighting. So it's outside of the, the green inside of the circle, right? Yeah. So I want inside the circle, or inside the blue, and outside the cardioid, or outside the green. So that region is going to be, let's use, I believe this here. Oh, that's what I just said. I thought it was this part. Inside the blue, outside the green. so far just on understanding what it is that we're trying to do. I'm looking for the purple area. I don't know if, it, if you can tell the color from back there. Now I need to figure out where these two functions intersect. Those are going to be my boundaries. Right? I'm not looking for any of this area down here or any of this. I just want to know between the two. That's going to be only there. 
So how do you propose to find the boundaries of integration systems? Set them equal to each other. Set them equal to each other, that's exactly right. Let me give you a few minutes and let you flop around doing that. Which two quadrants is cosine positive in again? One and four. That works out well for us. Right? <coughs> again, everything should work together. Please note that the angle that I'm interested in is going to go from down here up to here. Go back to here. When is cosine equal to one half? That's the adjacent, right? The adjacent over the hypotenuse. It's going to be pi over three. And negative pi over three, I believe. Yes. Can you go from zero to pi over three? Yes. So we're going to go from negative pi over three to positive pi over three in this case. Instead of pi over 3, could I go to um, 5 pi over 3? So could I go from pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3? Is that the direction I want to go? No, not in this case. So I hear a lot of people say that um, isn't negative pi over 3 the same thing as 5 pi over 3? And the answer is for sure no. It's not the same thing. It gets you to the same place, but it's not the same thing. Yes? We can't be sure of symmetry here. Then we can. Some of you are really going fast and are advanced, some of you are not. Just do what I gotta do. I'm, I'm impressed that you're so advanced, that's great. In this case, there is symmetry, and so I can go from zero to there and then double that. Now, I, I want to caution you against symmetry in some ways. When we're in two dimensions, symmetry is fine. Three dimensions, and students have a hard time with this, it's not okay sometimes. For example, Let's say that this is just the x and y domain piece, and z is doing something funky out here. Even though it's symmetric here, if I'm looking for the volume under something, <coughs> and I have some function doing this, do you see that it does matter? It's not symmetric, some weird, something different is happening here than happening here, out here. So it is going to affect it. Three dimensions, we can't do symmetry as easily. If we have a three-dimensional sphere, then yeah, there's symmetry. Sometimes. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. In this case, we're limited to two dimensions, that's fine. We're just going to go from here to here, and then double that. Now, I'm going to let you set up the integral and, and, and do all your boundaries and the whole thing here in just a second, but before I do that, we have to figure out which function is on top of the other function, meaning I'm going to have to subtract one function from the other. What I want you to do is I want you to view that we are not going up and down or left and right. We are going relative to the origin, which one is on top. So I'm going to give you a minute and see if you can piece together the integral based on that information. <laughs> 